So imagine my surprise when a shoe company that I have been interested in and internet stalking for a couple of months reached out to me, to me, to review and try on these shoes for you. Maybe it was fate. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe Google stole and sold all my data to this company knowing that I am already interested and therefore they sent me a marketing email. Either way, I'm super excited and blessed because I have been wanting to try these shoes for so long and I get to review them for you today and share with you my own opinion on if these are worth it or not. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know me, my name is Sakura. I live and work in Tokyo. For today's video, I was sent three pairs of shoes to try out and review them for you. And I'm going to go through each individual shoe because I think each shoe is quite different and how they fit and how they feel. And at the end of the video, I'm going to go through those three claims, the sustainability, stylishness, and comfortness slash quality at the end to tell you exactly if these shoes are worth it or not. Because ultimately, if you're watching this video, that's probably the question that you want to answer. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video. Also, just setting a little bit of context about my feet because I think that's important. So my feet are a little bit wide and they're not wide enough so that I can't wear most shoes, but they are wide enough to bother me when I wear most shoes, if that makes sense. So like it's doable, but it's not comfortable. And second, my right foot is slightly bigger than my left foot, which makes it even more annoying. So finding a pair of heels, for example, is almost impossible for me just because they're too tight, too slim, you know, too big, and I can never just find like a perfect pair. So that's like the issue that I normally have. In Japanese size, I am usually a 24 comfortably, but for heels, because I have wide feet, but I need smaller shoes, I tend to go for 23.5. For the EU size, I believe that's 38 for my main size and then 37 for the smaller shoes like the heels. All right, with that being said, let's start off with the first shoe, these. So these are the Madeline 2.0 boots. It's a little bit hard to show you, so I'm gonna back up. But these are the black long knee-high boots with a little bit of heel here. So for these boots, I got them in a size 38 and the reason why is because although they are slim, I wanted to be able to make sure I can wear long and thick socks with them. So what I will say about these boots is that they fit perfectly on my feet, especially um, with wearing like thicker socks. And I think one of the concerns about wearing these kinds of boots is if the, you know, this part, this top part of the knee part actually falls down. For these shoes, I'm actually surprised at how well they stay up. As you can see, the material is kind of like this soft but thick and stretchy material that's I think kind of like, almost like imagine a very thick and structured sock. That's what it feels like. So all throughout the boot, it's really slim, it's beautiful, it covers the knee and it doesn't slide down very much. However, it does a little bit, so it's not like completely proof, but they're a lot better than the things that I have tried before. And for my white feet, because I did, I know I wouldn't say it's size up, but I did get the bigger size that I usually get, I have no you know, issue with these shoes. I haven't been able to walk in them for you know, more than like a couple of days that I've tried. So I cannot say for sure like how comfortable they are, but I don't foresee any issues with these boots and I'm just really, really happy to have them. Although they are really tight, they can actually go over jeans, which I was surprised at. Of course, it's not like the easiest to put on or take off, but you can do it. And I still think it looks nice as long as you have the skinny jeans. So I definitely highly recommend these pairs of boots. I mean, I fell in love with them on first look and I was really happy to see that, you know, there's no issue with it otherwise. So the second pair of shoes I have are these lovely, what they call Melody 2.0s. So these pumps are uh, square toed. They have a heel for maybe like two or three inches. So it gives you a little bit of height, but still comfortable enough to wear casually. So let's talk about these shoes. Um, as you can see, the padding in these shoes, there is a little bit on the top here. It slims down and then there's also padding at the bottom here. So immediately what I noticed about Vivea's shoes that I was surprised by 
they are actually good quality. Like what I mean by good quality is that first of all, the skin of these shoes are pretty thick and structured. So that's like really sturdy. I mean, and they're supposed to be machine washable. So I love the fact that they have a shape to them with also being a little bit of a flexibility because it's made of this knit type of cloth, right? So it's not as restricting, but it still looks really nice. With this shoe, I got them in a size 37 EU and size 23.5 in Japan. So again, the reason why I did that is because I need to size down for pumps. Usually with these kinds of heels, I immediately get really uncomfortable on the back of this shoe because my foot slides in and out. And I'm happy to say I have no issues with this one so far, um, but I do have a couple of things I do wanna mention. So before, like I said, my right foot is a little bit bigger, unfortunately, than my left foot. So as you can see here, this is a square toe, which I thought would be good for my slightly wide feet. And my left, um, my left foot actually has no issue, but I do kind of hit this part here with my right foot. Now that's not Vea Shoes' fault because I just have, you know, very uneven feet. But I think after walking in these for a couple of hours, like going out to dinner and stuff, it did start to hurt just a little bit here. So that's one thing I would keep in mind is that while these are made for wide feet, I guess I would say with a square toe, as a person with slightly wide feet, it did still hurt a little bit. And I think um, there's definitely potential to wear them in. So I'm gonna try to keep doing that. But otherwise I will say like wearing pumps, usually I'm uncomfortable all over, but I only have that one like, issue with the right part. So I'm actually pretty impressed at how comfortable these heels are um, comparatively to any other ones that I have worn before. I think one thing that could be better is that I also, again, another information about my foot, but um, my foot arch is pretty straight, which is not good, which means there isn't a lot of support for my foot. So one critique I would have is it would be great if they had like more padding in the middle here for arch support. But again, overall, very impressed with the quality of these shoes. Last but not least, we have the third pair of shoes, which is in the flats category, which I know Vivea shoes is really known for. So I got the Margo 2.0 in the color almond, and I got them in the size 37. Now, let's talk about these flats, okay? They are so comfortable. Like the material inside here is a little bit different from the other shoes, the other pairs of shoes that I've worn, and they're really like buttery soft. And what I was surprised about with the quality, again, is when you wear these shoes, um, again, I'm gonna try to show you here, but I don't know if you can see, there's actually quite like heavy padding in the front and the right, like the inner part of the shoe here, as well as the back part of the shoe. So I was really surprised at how comfortable they were and good quality they were because they are a pair of flats. Usually, like the name suggests, a pair of flats that I have gotten have no support whatsoever, no cushioning whatsoever, and my foot does get tired because I'm on a, like a flat shoe for hours and hours, but this actually has padding. I was impressed. So for the pumps, uh, the, the shoe that was previous to this, I get them in the color ivory, which is a white, sorry, I forgot to mention that. But for this shoe, I got them in the color almond, which is like another beige toned neutral shoe. Um, they do kind of look similar, let me show you, in color, but if you can see in this lighting, this one is like almost cream white, and this is like a more cool tone beige brown. So just keep that in mind. If you have like, um, you know, a yellow undertone like me, um, it might be good to have like this kind of color too, um, instead of just a white for neutral. For this shoe, I did get this in a size 37. Again, I sized down, but I don't have the issue that I had with the pumps where the sizes were too small. So just for reference here, you can see that the shape is pretty similar, but somehow I don't have any issues with these flats. So if you're looking for like the ultimate comfort shoe and you're deciding between maybe like a pump and a flat, I would definitely highly recommend this flat. And this one is, I believe the square toed one, not the round toed one. So again, I thought this would be good for my wide feet, which I was definitely right about. All right, so now that we've gone through the details of the shoes and other things, I want to end this video by talking about the three claims again that Vivea has made about their shoe brand. And I'll tell you if I personally 
personally think that they are worth it or not. Just again, as a reminder, I have been gifted these shoes for free. However, they actually encourage me to speak out honestly about how I feel towards the brand. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's talk about the claims first. Number one, that they are stylish. As you can see in the videos, I personally really love the styles of these shoes. I think they are classic. I think they're beautiful. I think they match so many different things and outfits and seasons that I think that I can see myself wearing these for a very long time actually. Like I'm 28 now and I can obviously I'm gonna get older. So maybe the knee high boots are still kind of like trendy, but the other two like the pumps and the, he um, and the flats, I'm gonna definitely be wearing these for a really long time. In terms of the style, if you're looking for something minimalistic, if you're looking for something classic that's not really ever gonna go out of style, I highly, highly recommend. Like in that lens, I think it's definitely worth it. Now let's talk about the comfort and the quality. So as I mentioned in each shoe, like individual shoe review, I think the comfort level does differ. But the one thing I'll say is that Again, I, I did not want to like these shoes, okay guys, because they are expensive um, and I had a lot of doubt like buying shoes online and I just feel like it's really risky to spend more than 100 or $200 buying a pair of shoes that you don't really know, hence why you're watching this review, right? But I can say, like, I, and I'll always be honest, that the quality of these shoes surprised me in a positive way, especially the flats. Um, compared to the flats that I usually wear, that you can get otherwise uh, in different stores. Um, these are definitely not cheaply made. And what I like about the comfort, sorry, I'm kind of looking down at the shoes, but what I like about the comfort part is that it's kind of like a knit material, but it's still structured. So what that means is that there is a little bit of leeway. I'll say that I was imagining it to be way more flexible than it actually is. So it's not that flexible. There is some leeway, but uh, the structure makes it really good material as well as they're, you know, as well as they're being padding. So I really am pleasantly surprised at the durability in the, in the quality of these shoes, like from the bottom of my heart. The only thing that I will say is that I have not tried to machine wash them. Obviously, I've only had these for, I think like a couple of weeks um, or maybe even less than you know a few weeks, but I have been walking around in them. Um, they've been holding up great. Um, besides those two points that I cannot honestly attest to, I really like the quality of these and the comfort. The only issue that I really have so far is with the pumps and the heels because I have a little bit of a wider and bigger right foot. But other than that, like I think they're, very comfortable. So last but not least, let's talk about the sustainability part. It's funny because like even on their shoe, like again, they talk about the values, but like stylish and sustainable, like they really emphasize the sustainability part. So what I'm really wary about um, with fashion is that, and Vivea actually recognized this on the website, but that fashion industry produces so much waste. Um, as compared to other industries like right after oil. So we do know that this is not like a sustainable industry in general. So that's why brands like this pop up try to kind of mitigate that. Um, so they claim three things. One is that they make their shoes from recycled plastic bottles. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's easy to prove. They say that it takes about six plastic bottles to make a pair of shoes, which is great. Um, the second claim they have sorry, is that they use plant-based like materials. Again, I cannot check that. And the last thing is that they produce zero waste. I'm really wary of brands when they talk about sustainability because it is so, if I may say, like trendy. Like when you say sustainable, people really flock to that nowadays because obviously it's a good thing and you know positive for the environment. But what happens also is what's called greenwashing, where you say all these you know buzzwords about sustainability but not actually do anything for the planet. So I try to do my due diligence on like the sustainability of this brand. Um, the one thing that I couldn't really understand was, um, you know, the founder or the, I guess like the CEO, uh, whose name is Jeff is on the website, um, talks about how this is important to him, but I cannot find any information on this person. So that made me a little bit sussed out. I'm like, mm, I would like to know more about the actual founder and their process. And they do have a nice website highlighting some of the, the actions they're taking to be more sustainable, I guess, in their process. However, I am wary because I'm not an expert in this field. I wouldn't be able to honestly sit here in front of you and tell you that they are sustainable in the way that they are. 
Um, if there's someone who's already done research into this, please let me know in the comments below how you feel. But I, I feel like they did a good job, but I still don't really, like, can I really vouch if it's sustainable? I don't know. The one part of sustainability I will vouch though for Vivea shoes is that it's sustainable in the way that like you buy something for long term. I want to buy high quality products that can last me a long time so that I can mitigate the waste that I produce by like throwing these things out, right? So in that way, because this shoe is high quality and durable to my knowledge, they are sustainable in that way. But you know, when they talk about sustainability, they talk more about like the effects on climate change. So I apologize that this is a little bit vague. It's only because I'm not like transparently, I'm not very well versed in sustainability in corporations or sorry, not corporations, but companies. Um, but if someone does research on this, uh, please do let me know. The last point that I'll add is that um, the price is right. Like it's maybe around like over a hundred dollars or maybe even close to $200. I think in Japan, each of these shoes costs over each yen or 10,000 yen, which is quite expensive. So um, answering again, the ultimate question, are these shoes worth it? Like are these shoes worth your money? Comfort and style and durability and quality, I would say definitely yes. However, um, I have seen some reviews on the internet saying their exchange uh, and return, like they have a policy about it, but they've been having a hard time with their exchanges or getting their money back. Um, this is only a few anecdotal things on the internet, but I do want you to know that I have seen these. Um, so I think that once you get the shoe and if the size fits, you'll be really happy. Um, but the sizing is really important. So I really want to emphasize that you should try to get that right before ordering the shoe. If hopefully somebody around you has Vivea issues, maybe you can try them on. Uh, but at the end of the day, like would I purchase these on my own? Like knowing what I know now, definitely yes. All right, so that was it. Um, that was the review of Vivea shoes. I certainly hope this was helpful for you for you know things that you should consider before you purchase these shoes. And I hope all of you have a great day. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this video and the shoes, if you've worn them before. And feel free to subscribe, comment, share, like this video. And hopefully I'll see you in my next one. All right, see ya. Bye.